And we're back with some more auction not included on Rhyme. And I'm just going to finish this up in the background. But while this was all going on, this little micro pocket base, I want to uh, get rid of all this ice down here. Now, I could just mine it out, but that's boring. It's dull. It's not interesting. I want to actually have a little bit of fun removing it all. So I thought the fun thing would be, could I melt it all? I made myself like, I'm only allowed to fit in the tepidizer and what it took me to get it in. Oh, I, I dug up one extra brick by accident. But we've got a tepidizer down here and we're going to melt the entire biome. This could take a little bit of time, but you know, that's what fast forward is for. Only problem is we've no liquid to put down there yet, but we can. All we have to do is dump down a bunch of super coolant. So I'll dump down a few thousand kilos of super coolant down here. That'll get heated up by the tepidizer and then it'll start uh, melting all the surrounding ice. Then we add in more temperature shift, some temperature shift plates to spread that around, and then we add in more tepidizers, and I don't know, what's what's the cycle now? Let's say 2200 cycles. It's 2200. Let's see how long it takes to melt everything. And it's started. We've got the super coolant down here. It's heated up to about 90 degrees, but it's not spreading out that chill very well now, is it? All of that ice doesn't seem to be too bothered. Well, that's where a few temperature shift plates will come in handy. I think uh, we got some granite. Yep, granite temperature shift plates should be plenty good enough for this job. Uh, we'll just stick a few there and there. Uh, that should help start us uh, getting some more water in here. I'm going to have to mop up the super coolant at some point, but I will want uh, as much water as possible, or at least a little bit of an insulating barrier of water. I think we can do this in... Yeah, probably 50 cycles. Okay, that's being optimistic. Yeah, 50 cycles. If we throw enough power at it, we might be able to do this in 50 cycles. Then we just add an awful lot of temperature shift plates, just to help speed things along a little bit. Um, might want to add in a second tepidizer in a bit as well, and then maybe a third and a fourth. How much power have we got going on around here? Not a lot. I'm going to have to put in, say, four or five transformers up there. Yeah, I think we can get this done pretty quickly, if we put our minds to it. But in the meantime, while all of that is going on uh, over here, where is it? I'm just uh, finish putting the finishing touches on this, putting in the power supply and a few bits and bobs. This this should be ready to be functional long before the end of this episode. But uh, I kind of want to concentrate on melting this. We need this space because I want to put my rocket silo in here. So the rocket silo is going to be in this part down here. So this all has to go, which means I'm also going to need to move the water tank. I figure we melt this area. We can turn it into one giant water storage facility. You know, two birds, one water tank. I, of course, went too fast. The whole thing stalled out because, oh, no, wait. Yeah, I had to get more super glint in there. The water froze because I kept expanding too quickly and dumping too much chill. The tepidizer couldn't keep up, which is probably one of the first times I've seen a tepidizer unable to keep up with, you know, heating things. Dear Lord, there is some ridiculous cold down here. The ice is minus 120. Mm. More tepidizers. I'll just crack this area out here. We'll stick in a second tepidizer, then we can double the speed of this. Yeah, we're going to install our second uh, tepidizer down here and really start get, getting warmed up. God, that was a terrible pun. But that should help start melting. I'm, I'm kind of, kind of worried there's not going to be an awful lot of ice in here, or not an awful lot of water. As in, I'll melt a bunch of it, but then there'll be a big gap between the liquid and the top half, meaning it'll be really hard to melt anything. We'll have to see. Maybe I'll have to use bricks to start squishing it up or do something. Mm. Why is nothing ever simple? Oh wait, because it's oxygen not included. That's why. Oh, perfect. Now we have. Yeah, let's just start uh, expanding now. I think we've got uh, the, the heat capacity to do that. Yeah, we'll just throw in granite temperature shift plates everywhere. We're going to turn this entire place into a tepidizer. <laughs> uh, let's see what happens uh, in another couple of cycles. The expansion of our water tank continues. I've uh, started moving the tepidizers about to take advantage of different locations. I'm kind of stalled out on going to the right here. I don't have enough water to push over the lip, so we're going to keep going left and try and melt a bunch of ice up top. I'm going to try and not melt the ice down here so that it gives more of a flow. And hopefully we can push through in that direction. It's those little games you have to make for yourself while you're trying to, <laughs> trying to get things done. But that should allow us to push more right here, get more of that ice out of there, and dump it all across here so we can start cracking open to the right as well. I mean, that's where, that's where the, uh, the the rocket chimney is going to go. I want to make sure that's clear too. Uh, oh, and how's the base over here doing? The base over here, we've started... Yeah, I've messed it up. I've melted that wire, and I'm going to have to break it in and go in there. So yes, I'm still making plenty of mistakes in the background, but we do have it filled up and ready to start chilling. All I need to do is get the power flowing again. But this, yes, no, no, this is... The, oh, where is the temperature overlay? The temperature overlay looks rather interesting. It's nice and warm on one side, but then it gets progressively colder as we get into the areas we're breaking into. I really love this color mod. It, it makes things much easier when you look at it to realize just exactly how well you're doing. I uh, stuck in a few bricks there in the center to force the water up and we're expanding at quite a rapid rate. 
Will we make it in 50 cycles? No, 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 no. That was way too optimistic. Look at the size of this thing. I think it's going to be bigger skips forward from now on. Things continue to expand. I don't know if they're getting too much warmer, but I've, I've doubled down on the electrolyzers. We've got, uh, or tepidizers. I've got four over here and four over here. With eight tepidizers, we're making progress a lot faster. It's already cycle 220, though. Uh, so 20 cycles in, and yeah, we're not even close. Look at that. 20 cycles in, 25 cycles in, I want to be halfway done. There is no chance I'm getting it done that quickly. But dear lord, the amount of heating you have to dump in. All that, and water does not transfer temperature very well at all. The moment the temperature shift plates go in, oh, yeah, instantly ice starts melting everywhere touching the temperature shift plates. But until they go in, nothing happens. The water can be touching, 90 degree water can be touching ice, and the temperature transfer is just painfully slow. I'm uh, working in some of these parts here so that I can force the water up and I can get higher up and hopefully get some of these top bits as well. I really don't want to have to dig them out. That just feels, well, not that it's usually a waste, to be honest, at this point. We don't need the water, but it, it's just the principle of the thing more than anything else. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll skip this forward some more while we continue with this slightly ludicrous task. Only slightly. Yeah. It's... Yeah, um, I'm learning a few lessons. One, don't put down so many temperature shift plates. I don't need maximum coverage. I just need a sort of a checkerboard pattern. So that's what I've started going with, and it's cutting down on the labor. I may also be poking up a little bit higher than I need to, but, you know, I sort of got that castle battlements effect going on right now. But this is probably where I'm making the fastest progress, probably because I want to. Uh, the reason being, this is where, going, where the rocket silo is going to go, or the rocket uh, chimney. So I want to get this cleared out, or as most of it. I might not go all the way to the end here. There is... There's a... Uh, yeah, my completion streak in me wants to do that. Okay, we'll, we'll see how it goes. I'll we'll see how much time I have. i got to get this out by... Ooh, yeah, was it Thursday? Mm, yeah, we'll see if we can get it done by then. Uh, some more skipping forward. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Let's uh, let's have a look at the glorious temperature overlay. Yes, that's that's perfect. Just surrounded by minus 100 degree ice with this, this warm expanding blob of uh, liquid in there. Eight tepidizers. That's all it takes. If you have... I was considering definitely doubling down and putting in 16 tepidizers, but it turns out it doesn't matter. I've got enough that I, I can't actually put inject the heat into the ice fast enough. So we're just stuck with what we got. The project continues apace. Uh, let's see, where are we looking at on temperature? Yeah, temperature's looking good. That's looking really good. We haven't got the, the whole ice uh, biome melted yet, but we're doing pretty good for, I mean, it's 40 cycles in, and that's a lot. That's a lot of progress we've made. Uh, at the time being, I've sort of hotkeyed both sides, and I just have to sort of hop back and forth, putting in temperature shift plates and uh, ladder segments and all that so that can be accessed. I've also started trying to increase it up the top a bit, break in stuff down the bottom. All in all, this went a lot faster than I thought it would. All you have to do is just throw eight kilowatts of power into tepidizers, and yeah, you can you can melt an awful lot of ice very quickly, it seems. Though, uh, yeah, I think it's time I got started on migrating people over to this base, or I should at least fire up some of the equipment. So I think that will be the next step. We'll be firing this up and or maybe extracting the hydrogen first. Hmm. Actually, I don't even care if we dump. I think we'll dump out all the oxygen and stuff. It'll eventually float down to the bottom and get uh, siphoned out. Yeah, I think we'll do this next. Yeah, I, I never got around to this. Uh, this uh, this is kind of hypnotic when you start getting into the rhythm of this. Just uh, placing down the temperature shift plate tiles, popping back and forth, trying to expand rapidly or expand the temperature area you're trying to expand into as rapidly as possible. I mean, I'm not going to make it by 250, like the 250 cycles, or 2250, but that doesn't mean I can't get a decent score. I know it's not technically scored, but I want to see how quickly I can melt the whole thing. I mean, I'm not that far away from the edge. That's, you know, I, I shouldn't be too far behind schedule, hopefully, so long as I keep on top of things. It's just a case of bouncing f back and forth between each side, making sure all the temperature shift plates get put down in decent order. And uh, I think... I think we'll be pretty damn close to where we need to be at. It's just gotta stay on top of things. But dear lord, the amount of power and heat and temperature shift plates and just duplicate labor has been ridiculous. But if you're willing to put in the time and the effort and you've got the, the prep work done on the background, you can melt an awful lot of this biome pretty damn quickly. I mean, we're not even 50 cycles in yet. Yeah, I'm gonna, uh, cut, <laughs> I'm gonna cut this out for a bit and I'll cut back in when I've got a bunch more of this melted. Cycle 200 and... Well, cycle 2,250. 50 cycles after we've started. I think we've made a lot of progress. Are we quite there? No, unfortunately we're not. I was getting... Ugh, I really wanted to get to the edge before the 250 cycle mark. But unfortunately, yeah, we're, we weren't even getting at that side either. I was uh, very focused on moving across this way for some reason. But I think that looks... 
That's a fair chunk of progress for the, the time frame given. Like 50 cycles and we've got that much melted. Right? Completely pointless. Don't need the water, but, you know, it's amazing what you can do with enough tepidizers and temperature shift plates. And, uh, well, just a little bit of OCD, I suppose. Okay, yeah, I'm not OCD, but I kind of want to see how much water we can get out of this. And anyway, I'm going to skip this forward a bit more. We're, we're so close. Right side completely finished. We've got it all the way done, all the way to the edge. I'm now going to start putting in bricks so that we can push up the water a bit and maybe just maybe start melting this stuff up here. We're getting, we're starting to push up here. Oh, nope, there's a missile out there. We're starting to push up here and uh, push into the top. Like there's still, there's still carbon dioxide, liquid carbon dioxide in there. It's so cold. But yes, down below it, down below it, we've got that nice little yellow glowy feeling going on. Look at that. That is glorious. The amount of temperature shift plates, tepidizers, power, everything that has been thrown in here. Ludicrous. Sheer ludicrous. Uh, oh, but over here. I think we can turn off these tepidizers now. I don't think I really need them. I'm going to use the... Yeah, that's another handy thing. Where is it? The disconnect utility. Ah. Love that mod. Yeah, with that done, then the next thing I have to do is finish off the left side. This is almost done as well. And once that's done, we can start bricking up the bottom and melt a lot of it. We are so close to melting it all. So close. What... Once I've uh, tapped in here, we'll have most of that edge is gone. Then it's just a case of building tiles along the bottom to force the water up. So it's about 62, so 62 cycles so far to get this far. Whew. But it does feel like it took a while. Damn, that's so much water still left to go. But look at the size of that water tank. That is insane. Well, we've got plenty of water for days. Lots and lots of clean water. Uh, uh, more skipping forward, I think. Though I think we'll we'll classify this as done, and we can uh, we can cut this out of uh, rotation. I want to get back up top, and I want to finish off the little micro base. Was it micro mega base? Yeah, the micro mega base, just so that uh, we can have that ready to go. Next up after that is going to be drilling our our rocket silo, our improved uh, rocket chimney. I am so looking forward to that. I'm going to make it stupidly large. Now it's time to activate this base. At the moment, I'm sucking out all the hydrogen at the top. Just a couple of gas, gas pumps, gas filter. And all of that's just getting dumped at the top there. Ignore the huge amount of piping. This little bit of piping here is all that matters. It's dumping all the hydrogen at the top. But there is a filter on it here, so it'll dump any oxygen down the bottom if there's any oxygen in the system. There, there's no oxygen in the system. We have to turn these suckers on. First, water. Water is hooked up all the way from the bottom of the map. As in all the way down, where is it? All the way down here, all the way from this freshly freshly skimmed or melted ice water. We have an awful lot of it. I've, I finished off the whole thing because I couldn't help myself, okay? I just, I have a problem. It needed to be done. While there was any ice left, it needed to go. So temperature shift plates all around. It's all done. It only took me 108 cycles. Though I probably could have shaved off about 10 or 20 cycles. If I hadn't spent so much time prep working this. Uh, oh, but anyway, we are ready to start this sucker up. So, water's done. We just have to uh, finish off that last pipe segment. Boom, water is now flowing. These whole things are full of hydrogen, so this should theoretically be simpler to start up than any others. Let's just uh, pop them all on, on, uh, you also on, you also on. Where's the rest of you going? Oh yeah, that was up there for something else. Turn on the gas overlay, and let's have a look, see what happens. Well... Nothing. Oh, yes, I have to set up these uh, Atmos sensors, don't I? Yeah, I just had a quick stop there, went and found my old tutorial, and actually had to look up the description to see what the gas settings were. 250 for the hydrogen, above 250 for the hydrogen, above 450 for the uh, oxygen. Uh, or the bottom ones, whichever way you want to look at it. Gas settings, let's see. Oh, yeah, there's there's five kilos of hydrogen in there. It's going to take a while before it gets rid of all of that. I've, I've got uh, these in here to filter out, well, to dump everything so far. I should probably get rid of those shortly. Uh, you know what, let's start uh, deconstructing those now. I don't want to start dumping oxygen out into my pristine environment just yet. Uh, the entire map is pretty much hydrogen now, so it'd be a shame if I was to dump a bunch of oxygen out there. Oh, I think I've already just started, have I? Oh, there goes the oxygen now. Come on, faster. No, I just... Oh, I think we got it. Not that one, though. There, blob of oxygen just get out. It's fine. It'll eventually float down to the bottom of the map and get disposed of. Anyway, that, Jesus, that is a horrific mess. That will start dumping oxygen and hydrogen into the room, but the hydrogen will all get filtered at the top. Eventually, there will only be hydrogen at the bottom. None of them are... Hmm, none of them are supposed to be hooked up to the, uh, the atmosphere ducts. So we will just disconnect you. I must have missed that one. This disconnection tool is amazing, by the way. It just makes a, 
mistakes much easier to catch on the fly. You can go, you can go, you can go. How? How have I messed up so many of these things? That just, it boggles my mind how dumb I am uh, that I can just keep letting this happen. Boom, okay, I'll have to empty out all the gas out of those pipes when the time comes. But that should hopefully help. Where is that going? Why is that not, not hooked up? One moment. There we go, that's better. Those are supposed to be piped in there. I probably disconnected the wrong part when I was breaking the pipes. Uh, overflow, yeah, you go in there. And you go in there. What the? God damn it. <laughs> One second while I sort out my stupidity. Right, system should be functioning about right. How is there? Ooh, our gas pressure in your essence stabilized. Why not? Oh, I haven't set the hydrogen out, but have I? Oops. 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 Oopsie doops. I need to have somewhere for this hydrogen to go. Uh, okay, maybe I didn't think this ahead as well as I thought. I thought I was prepped, but no, no, no. Right, problem solved. I just did a little bit of gas piping rejigging. All the overflow of hydrogen will go down to the hydrogen generators to be burned off. Perfect. That means this should finally start stabilizing and it will just start producing oxygen. Okay, top half is mostly hydrogen once we skim out the last of that. And the base is starting to look almost habitable. Well, except for the area where we store our food, which is perfectly normal. Yeah, uh, how is our critters looking in here? Ooh, 149. There'll always be a little bit more than what I put in because there'll always be children around just before the adults starve to death. Wow, that's dark when you say it that way. Yeah, maybe too much room world. Oh yeah, this should hopefully be habitable quite shortly when it is, or when all the hydrogen is removed. And it's just a, a completely oxygen atmosphere, we can start moving everyone over. I've already went through and had a... Uh, I've clicked on all of these to make sure that when the time comes I can just build an exosuit dock here, and everyone can just run in and start transferring in here. Though, so, oh, I should probably put in some doors. Oh, wait, no, we got those in already. Yeah, I think this is going to work out quite well. The only thing I'm worried about is where is all the carbon dioxide going to sort of congregate? It has a tendency to bunch up in places, and if it bunches up in my bedrooms, I'll have to do a bunch of rejigging. There's all sorts of uh, minor modifications that will have to be changed, but that, that should be the bulk of it. Yeah, let's skip this forward a bit. So I spent about the last 20 minutes just catching all the silly mistakes I made. Um, first one was... I left out two blocks. I somehow missed these two blocks right here and right here. I went back and actually saw it. Yeah, it's clearly visible in the earlier video footage. Yeah, this was messing up the gas pressure here. So this kept getting the hydrogen in here, kept messing up and getting mixed with oxygen, and hydrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, oxygen, back and forth. I could not figure it out. I just missed those two blocks there for ages. I eventually had to just break it open, let a bunch of hydrogen in and fix it. But now, now the whole lines are clean. And, I've, and to help clean out the lines, I dumped a bunch of it into the Atmos suits. And yeah, I think I... I I accidentally had to do an awful lot of repairs on those. A lot of those got very, very damaged. Next step up is I've got the these three here filling up uh, those eight, six, 24 docks. So this is taking care of 24 docks, and this is taking care of 24 docks. They've got more than enough, enough oxygen to cover all of those, which means there should be some backup in the pipes, which should oxygenate the whole base. That's the theory. We have 60 kilos, of, well, enough oxygen to support 60 dupes, and we're only supporting 48, or we will only support, be supporting 48, so we should have plenty of spare oxygen to go around. At the same time, yeah, all the hydrogen is going down here. A bunch of it maybe got oxygenated a bit. So I do have to mop that mistake up. And I uh, included a little on switch to make sure it stayed on. The oxygen was messing with the automatic burn off feature. But all solved. All solved. Yeah, all we got ne to do next is start transferring people over, I think. Oh, no. I want to do some slight modifications here. I was advised that I could just move the liquid lock one, two tiles to the right and then fill this whole place with the... Uh, why are you burnt? Ah, oh, buggery. I need to put a gas in there, don't I? I'm thinking chlorine? Chlorine? Yeah, I think chlorine will be the gas of choice that goes in there. Uh, so I need to dump chlorine in here and maybe put in a temperature shift plate to transfer the heat better and make that out of something more... Well, something tougher like, say, steel. God, that was dumb of me. Problem solved. I dumped in, well, about a ton of bleach stone. That will off-gas in there. The pressure will eventually hit 1.8 kilos. I also built in a quick uh, temperature, shift, temperature shift blade out of diamond, just touching the, the floor tiles. That should keep everything nice and chill. I also replaced the iron auto sweeper with steel. Now it's working quite well. I was going to move this liquid lock over here, and then... Yeah, I actually, I prefer to have it compartmentalized. I, I I don't mind paying that extra little bit of cost for the fridge. It'll be fine. Which reminds me, that also that fridge also needs to go online. Oh, perfect, perfect. So I think we're almost ready to start this up. Let me have a quick look around, and if uh, if we're ready, I think we'll fire this sucker up and see how she runs. So many things I've forgotten. I forgot to put in my carbon skimmers, so they're now in place. 
for water for them, I just siphoned it off of the uh, the oxygen supply. Any leftover water will get sent over to the carbon skimmers. The carbon skimmers, I'm not even going to bother recycling the polluted water. The plan is to live off the water from rockets, so we should have way more than we need anyway. Uh, for this, I'm filling the, I'm priming the water loop here for the toilets. I'm going to think maybe I'm just going to dump water into these as well and not try and save it. But for the time being, we'll, we'll run the recycling loop because, well, because we can. Also, I want to fill this up with the, uh, put the, whatchamacallit in here, the poke shelf to eat the dirt. It's been a while since I tried that. And yeah, I think, okay, we're full. No more of you. Done and dusted. And then we have a full loop for the toilets. And we have our first customer. Wait, that's not actually our first customer, is it? Well, it was the flash. That's kind of appropriate. Right, I'll just uh, finish off the last of this and see if there's anything I've missed. There's probably something I've missed, but I'll figure it out. I think we are good to go. I think we can just turn the system on and be be happy. Well, we'll find out if we're happy. Uh, all we're going to do is just stick in some Atmosuit... Oh, no, not Atmosuit docks. Atmosuit checkpoints. Ooh, the game gets a bit slow when it saves. I've set the saves to once every 10 cycles, but it's still taking a bit of time. Yeah, right about there. Right about there. And right about there. I cannot remember for the life of me if they need power. Nope, nope. We're good. So everything's powered. What should happen is they should build those, and then if they run past them, they'll drop off their suits. Well, we want to make sure that's uh, clearance vacantly only, so they'll only drop off their suits if there's space. Otherwise, they won't. Ooh. Boom. Okay, they're coming in and out. That's exactly what we wanted. Clearance vacancy only, and finally clearance vacancy only. Nice. Right. That means they should be working in here as normal, and we'll start to see if the carbon dioxide gets uh, a bit worse. Uh, for in here, I think, yeah, all I want to do is let that hydrogen out. There was uh, maybe a minor design flow where I left some hydrogen in there, some hydrogen blobs, but one of them is getting out now. I'm going to deconstruct this and this. The reason being I want to put in another uh, grooming station. I want four grooming stations in here to make sure this is as fast as possible. Ooh, and before that happens, let's maybe sweep that up. Hopefully we can save some of that before it gets eaten. Uh, do they eat steel? Oh, well, they don't really eat the steel. I was worried some of it might have been iron ore or something like that. We'll put that there. I'll have to move, a do a little bit of rejigging, but that should only take a minute. And it is done. We have, uh, I've moved everything a couple of tiles to the right so I could fit in four of them. Unfortunately, I can't quite sweep that area. There's nothing I could do about that. So I've just set the, uh, this automated storage system to allow manual use. So all the meat gets dumped in there anyway. All the meat gets dumped across the rails and just ends up right there, where my duplicates can't access it, but this auto sweeper can, and it fills up our electric grills for us. Perfect. And this over here sweeps up the barbecue that falls down there and dumps it into our fridge so that we can access it. Well, from the duplicates can access it just from beyond this door. Duplicates can't get through this door, so they can stand on the opposite side and pull the barbecue out. However, this fridge out here, one second, we will just copy the settings, put that there, and we will drop that one setting to four. That should, theoretically, that means this is, since this is at five, my duplicates will never try and put take barbecue out of this to put in there. The only barbecue they'll put in there is loose barbecue they find lying around the map. Which shouldn't happen very often. And if they do find it, they'll eventually put it in there and then it can be picked up later by some other duplicate and eaten. Uh, it's closer to the front, I mean, they've got to do that, right? Uh, all of that is done. I think I'm going to throw that in a save game file here just in case I've messed something up horribly and then we're just going to start deleting everything over here. Oh, yeah, these things mess with pressure. I was, uh, yeah, someone was pointing out in the comments that they, they cause pr low pressure areas down below and they had pop two beer drums. I just stuck in some airflow tiles across there to help and it seemed to work just fine. But I don't know, your mileage may vary depending on how big you make your base. I had a lot of area for it to draw air pressure from, so it didn't cause me any issues. But it potentially could have. Anyway, let's uh, start deleting beds and oh, all sorts of things. That's it. Every single bed, every dining table and the toilets, all set to deconstruct. This whole place is about to become a very empty, hollow base. If we've done it right, everyone should be able to just move over to the new place automatically. They're pretty good that way. Well, they were last time I moved base. Oh, look, beds are signed. Oh, I left gas pumps in here. You know what? I'll leave them there for the minute. I think there's a tiny little bit of hydrogen still floating around. Once that's gone, I'll uh, I'll remove the gas pumps. Honestly, the one morale they lose for not being in a, a bedroom, I don't even know if it's worth it, is it? How, how much is a bedroom worth? Or a barracks? A barracks is worth... Mm, one morale. God, thinking about that, thinking about it that way... I don't even need to put them in bedrooms realistically. Just a cot should be fine just for the sleeping bonus, and even that's not really that essential. Hmm. 
no, no, no. We've got our beds up. This is a nice little uh, micro mega base. <laughs> All we've got to do now is hire a bunch more pawns uh, or dupes. And I should probably put in another training area for them. We're going to need to train up another eight dupes and possibly a few more after that. But that is the core base gone. Wow, that feels kind of weird. This was supporting me for so long. Hmm. Oh, something's happening. Who's getting scalded? Why are you down there without a suit? Well, okay, I kind of know why you're down there without a suit. Hmm, did all the suits get transferred across? Nope, nope, nope. I need to make sure they can't get in there. This one, though, needs to go back behind the doors. Where are you? Right, I'm going to have to move them up to here somewhere. Uh, also, yeah, there's no oxygen out there. This is an entirely hydrogen environment. This is going to make things far more dangerous. Oh, crikey. Uh, yeah, okay, you can go in there. I should probably make hospital beds. Where are you? Okay, now, are you going to get in a suit when you go out this time? I'm going to have to be very careful here. I think what I'm going to do is make sure all of these doors are set to out only. Yeah, I'm going to make it so these doors are set to out only, and that way they can't come back in here again, and then we'll demolish the place. I had a problem getting all the dupes out until I realized they couldn't get out here. There was no ladder. Somehow I'd managed to demolish this, probably putting in a power cable or uh, an insulated gas pipe. There was probably a natural tile there that was they were using to get out. And when I demolished that, they could no longer use this Atmos suit docks. Ah, oh, it's the little things. The little things. As well as that, I messed up my uh, piping on this plumbing. And until I put that bridge in, all the toilets backed up. We had uh, a couple of messes, but... But we're all cl cleaned up now. And Stephen is getting better after they're scalding. No one else has managed to wander outside without an Atmos suit, except for Steven. So, yeah, I I'd well believe it, actually. It's a Steven, all right. So, time to get everyone out of here. I I've set these doors so that they can't come back in, and yet they are just ignoring it. They're like, yeah, don't care. We're still going to come back in. Go on. Someone there just show me. Yeah, see that? The Flash there just completely ignored those, that information to not walk back in the door and simply walked back in the door. Ah... <sighs> So, maybe I've got the doors the wrong way. Whatever, I've turned off that door and I've turned off this door. So, there's no one allowed in or out of those. I'm going to get everyone to leave now and then lock the doors entirely. Hopefully, that will stop them doing this annoyance. Oh, that's the third. Oh, and these I can deconstruct. I don't have to worry about them causing many more problems. Oh, actually, wait. No. No. No, let's cancel that. Just in case anything does go wrong, I want to leave those in place. I'll see if I can't convince the rest of these stoops to leave. Got the whole place empty. Even got the exosuit docks or exits gone. Every single dupe should now be in here. I also set the doors. Yep, there's the last one in. I also set the doors so they could only enter and never exit. So that's all of them in there. That you can tell that they can't move any of that stuff out because there's no no one who can know where they can put it. This is their entire world right now. If we check the gas overlay, carbon dioxide isn't working out too bad. I was worried with four pawns in here or four dupes in here quite a bit, it would mess with the there'd be too much gas pressure, but it seems to be working out. And none of them are suffocating. Well, yet. What? Yeah, I think this base, I think we'll call it a success. We even have all this extra space down here to work with, which is crazy considering this is the entire size of the base. We can fit the entire base on the screen. In fact, if we zoom out a bit, we can fit the entire base and its oxygen supply on the screen and its cooling. The cooling is working out great. I mean, okay, it's ludicrous. Uh, it was a silly idea to do it this way. But all the oxygen comes out the other side at about five degrees or so. Where is it? Uh, yeah, five degrees. Immediately dumps a bunch of its heat and cooling into the environment. What's the temperature in here? Yeah, it's slowly chilling the entire place down to 5C. This place over here is a bit warm, but you got to expect it's going to take a bit of while for the chill to spread out. But once we're finished, I think it'll be a bit warm down here where the Transformers are, but the entire rest of the base should be nice and chill. Oh, okay, except for maybe the grills as well. Anyway, ooh, I would like to inject a couple of quick notes here just from uh, going through the comments. There was a lot of recommendations that I use uh, Paku as my food supply. Uh, the reason I didn't choose Paku, well, not so much choose Paku, is I didn't really have the choice to use Paku at the moment. There's no Paku on the map. Uh, there's none. Zero. Zilch. My only other choice was to wait until I got them out of the gate, which I considered doing, and then I considered, well, I could keep reloading the game until I got a gate that gave me one, but then, yeah, it takes me three minutes to load the game. I, I just wasn't bothered. At least this feels less This feels less exploitative to me to do it this way. This one costs me labor. I have to actually spend duplicate time to get the food. True, it's still completely exploitative, but, you know, I'm not going to worry too much about it. Uh, the second thing I wanted to cover was, yeah, my setup here is a little bit odd. There's a reason for this that's not uh, immediately apparent. The first is, once you start dumping huge quantities of uh, material below a conveyor chute, I mean millions of calories of stuff, I encountered this weird bug that's almost impossible to replicate unless you're just playing a really long game. If you, say, leave that conveyor chute right on top of uh, the food, and then bring in the food from the side, what happens is the food can't really... It, 
sort of somehow interferes with the food it's going to drop onto and it sometimes drops off a tile early. And this was causing it to drop outside or inside my visco gel and then go off inside the visco gel. So what I've done is I've made sure that there's always a one tile gap below my chutes. My conveyor chutes have to drop one tile. And this ensures that no matter where the food comes from on the rail, it always has a place to drop off and it never clogs up. This, this is something that only happens when you're dumping enormous quantities of food into one spot. Just don't put the chute on the ground. If you put the chute, say, behind it like that, that's when you get a problem. So long as you put it in the air, you're fine. That's why my, my setup looks a bit weird, is because I had to sort of space everything out so that the chutes were one tile above where I needed them to go. I have no idea if this Paku will be able to keep up with the water sieve, I think, or this poke shell. I think one poke shell can keep up with the water sieve. Though, yeah, I haven't tested this in any way, shape, or form. Uh, if you were doing this right, you'd lock these doors and you wouldn't allow anyone in here so that they couldn't get injured by the poke shell. Though I doubt anyone should go in there anyway. The automation should take care of 99% of it. However, there's no way into this electrical grill room unless my pawns or my dupes hop up the door system. I think I could lock the bottom ones and let them come in through the top. I just like to see them hop up and down sometimes. It's kind of cool. Oh, this... This is amazing. This works just perfectly. Look, there's Catalina sitting right there. What's your what's your decor exposure this turn? Let's see. Last cycle, 1,500. <laughs> Average this cycle is only 215. Well, that is that is currently weak sauce. But your current environmental decor is 14. Ah, anyway, sorry. I'll, I'll let you back to the regularly scheduled. Time to let them all run free. I've shut. I've changed the door permissions. <laughs> oh, I should probably get them a few more suits. Damn it! That's what I wanted to do. I want to see how many more suits they needed. I'll let them all run free for a little bit, and then after they've had their fun, I'll uh, let them all, I'll lock them all back inside and see how many sh suits were short. Minus five. There's five dupes in rockets at the moment. Oh, which reminds me before I go. I, I want to call this, uh, I need to come up with a name for this. It's a rocket pancake? I, I don't know what to call this. This is what happens when a rocket lands and it burns out its own automation wire to launch again, and then it just gets entombed in regolith. But because it's at the bottom of a rocket silo, it just... The, the, the regolith never got over the side. It seems to be just falling straight down. Anything that's not straight down hits the edges. So it's just right up to here. And the only reason it hasn't gone any further is that rocket keeps landing on top of this and smashing any of the regolith that it, it gets any higher than that. What's the temperature in that regolith? 400 degrees. Yeah, that's... That is beautiful. I, I, I kind of want to dig it out, though. It's been like that for way too long. We'll just uh, very carefully dig out the bottom segments here. Otherwise, actually, ah, who cares? Care is not something we really do very well in this in this colony. Okay, right. but I think we can I think we can call that quits there. We have melted the ice biome or the the frozen core, and we have moved everyone over to a base that is smaller than my industrial brick. My industrial brick is is bigger, or my cryo brick is bigger than uh, my base. In fact, it's only about two and a half times bigger than the the Dreco farm. That is quite a small little compact base we've got going for us, and I love that built-in food supply. We'll see if it works out though. I think next up, I'll do a little bit of demolition off screen. The demolition is going to be, well, this. This whole thing has to go, which is, you know, kind of sad, but, eh, it is what it is. Once that's all gone, it's going to be drilling the rocket solar right down the middle. We can decommission these old uh, electrolyzers. The Rodriguez is there. Most of the stuff supporting this base can go. It's amazing how much of the infrastructure is there just to support that monstrosity. If you check the electrical grid, see all those electrical wiring? All of those are hooked back up to transformers. All those transformers can be ripped out. Uh, I don't leave any transformers out on the map for reasons that'll become clear later, but uh, yeah. Mm, mm. Anyway, how is our rocket looking? Ah, there we go. We're digging that thing out. It's just the way it was a perfectly cased in, in regolith, all the way down on every side perfectly. Did any of the dupes manage to get the... Oh, yeah. Never mind. Hey, we'll cut it out there. I hope you enjoyed this, uh, well, defrosting? <laughs> yeah, defrosting, I think we'll call it. And uh, our little micro-megabase. Uh, good luck.